Hey, it's Brinklebach and on the last day of May 2015, I'm taking a quick look at the papers and putting you in my pocket with a recording device made by Microsoft Lumia. But I'm talking to you on YouTube about the Sunday Times. First, two newspapers. One's the Sunday Business Post. The other one's the Sunday Times. And in Ireland, both are worth reading. There's also a third one called the Sunday Independent, which I just don't trust. And today, another day, but I don't trust it. So I don't buy it. I go to McDonald's occasionally and read it. If you were to do that, go to your McDonald's and read it for free. You'd see a column on the left-hand side with Alan Dukes talking about most of the things here and here are wrong. And yet, nobody in Ireland can actually talk about it. Kind of wild, isn't it? The thoughts of time just dribble down. So the redacted thing, if you go to uh, Twitter, that's a microblogging service. Although most people don't know what a blog is anymore, they'll deal with this word redacted. There'll be a hashtag called redacted. On page three of the Sunday Business Post, it says, hey, we'll make you 10 questions. Facing up against one tycoon, the Irish Parliament, the Doyle, and lots of things you can't talk about. So Dennis is the guy involved. Some people call him Dennis the Menace. He's Irish, rich, Ireland's richest man, media and telecoms billionaire. Other big questions remain behind the scenes that were never answered about how Dennis got his billions on the back of a sale of a mobile phone license that um, some of the competitors argue uh, wasn't exactly ethical. I'm not saying that, though. Dennis is a nice guy. One of the main issues, Dennis says, there's no public interest in what he's done to do a few transactions with Ireland's bad banks. So move along. The background of the story is starting to emerge through the Freedom of Information Act. The Irish Department of Finance had concerns about various corporate issues, governance issues, in the bad bank that Dennis was dealing with. That would be called the Irish, uh, the, the um, what's it, the Bank Resolution Corporation. Irish Bank Resolution Corporation? I don't know. You used to call it Anglo. Now they call it IBRC. It's a bad bank. It's, a, it's going to be wound up by the government after it deals with some major billions of euro of investment. Dennis says privacy has to be maintained and... Um, an Irish politician, Catherine Murphy, Murphy said something that, well, Sunday Times will tell you, but the Sunday Business Post can't. So, lots of things about the accuracy of what Catherine Murphy said. Whatever happens, there's a long way to run because there's a constitutional crisis here. I dealt with it on InsideView.ie. That's my website. But here, front page of the Sunday Times is something that every Irish citizen should buy or at least read today. If you're an average Irish citizen, you just go to any news agent and just pick it up and start reading it. It's pretty easy. Front page article by Stephen O'Brien and Mark Ty, talking about things like the verbal agreements that Dennis O'Brien made, which allowed him to extend the terms of already expired loans through a verbal agreement with the head of the Irish Bank Resolution Corporation. Hmm. How's that then? I can't even get a, a permission from my credit union to roll my loan from one to another, much less ask a credit committee. Mr. O'Brien was enjoying a rate of 1.25%, and on the half million euro line of credit, if it had been charged at 7.5%, this bad bank, IRB, IBRC, would have been able to bank more money for the Irish taxpayer. Dennis felt so confident that he got the approval for this verbal agreement that he went to Kieran Wallace, who is a special liquidator, the guy responsible for winding up the Irish Bank Resolution Corporation. And Kieran said, yeah, you're good to go. We'll give you the same favorable loans. You got the verbal, you got an agreement. Go ahead, when we wind up this bank, you won't have to worry about paying the commercial rate. We'll give you the best rate, because that's what you arranged. On Wednesday, in the Doyle, the elected representative, Catherine Murphy, said, there are unorthodox verbal agreements between senior debtors and the chief of the IBRC, and she's concerned about it. I would be too. Are you in Ireland? Do you care about the news? Well, I wouldn't read the Indo, the Sunday Independent, because <laughs> Dennis owns the controlling interest. I'd read the Sunday Business Post and the Sunday Times. I'd buy this one. If I were you, because it's news all good citizens of a democracy ought to be concerned with. I'm Bernie. I'm a blown American living in County Tipperary. Sue me, if you wish. I expect this paper's going to be in court. So you're to buy it. 
help them out for their, their legal fund. Take care out there. Enjoy the Sunday bank holiday weekend. Check out, check out more breaking news by following Sunday Times Online. Or me, my words, my name is Top Gold on Good Social Networks. Bye for now.